imagine it, that's the only way you can really imagine it. A mountain of water, not even ice, it's water. And suddenly the path was clear for Musa -Islam, and Bani Israel to cross over. And they did, and they started crossing. And when they finished crossing over, they saw Fir'aun had reached the other side. Yeah? Had reached the other side. <coughs> so, the, uh, one of the people, one of the people, he said, you know what? Why don't you close the sea quickly so they can't chase us? Yeah? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa alayhi salam, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah? Don't do it, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had never planned. Now, if we go back to Fir'aun's side, Fir'aun has now reached the banks. Yeah? He's there, he can see it's open. And Fir'aun, again, he wants to show the people, look, I'm God, isn't it? Yeah? And he's so arrogant. You know, imagine this happens in front of you. You're a man, surely you should repent to Allah. You should accept his deen. Yeah? You should accept his messenger. What does Fir'aun say? Fir'aun says to his people, he turned to his people and he said, look, the sea has opened at my command, so that I may follow those rebels and arrest them. Subhanallah, what arrogance, what arrogance does this man have, yeah? He's not willing to just, you know, accept what's happening in front of him, the miraculous event that's happening in front of him. So instead, this is what he tells his people and he heads in. And as they got in, as the army got in, and they got to about halfway or so, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa -Islam to smite his staff again, at which point the sea closed. And Fir'aun at that time, he shouted, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. He didn't say Muhammad, Muhammad Rasulullah because obviously he didn't know about Muhammad Sallallahu yeah? But essentially what he said is, look, I believe that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, in whom the children of Israel believe, and I am one of those who surrender to him. But at that moment in time, yeah, the fact is in Islam, when you reach that point in time, at your death, if you try to proclaim the shahada, if you have not believed before that, and you try to proclaim the shahada, at the last moment of your death, it's not accepted from you. Yeah, so it's not accepted from Pharaoh. That was the end of him. He had his chance before that. And he didn't listen. And so therefore he died a kafir. Yeah? And he died and his body, and he got washed. He basically, he died, and when he died, his body actually washed up on the sea. So people could see it as a sign. Yeah? So what happened to Pharaoh? Yeah? This is the result of a man who proclaims his God. And the people of Egypt and Bani Israel, they saw this man. It's just, he's nobody, isn't it? Yeah? He's the man he claimed he was a god, he couldn't even save himself from death. Yeah? He's nothing. And this event, this event, yeah, the escape of Musa salam, the death of Fir'aun, this happened on Yawm al-Ashura, the 10th of <coughs> Muharram, yeah? the day of Ashura. And this is one of the reasons why it's such a special day. Yeah? And it said on this day that Obviously, Prophet Musa Islam used to fast, yeah? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to fast, and even Prophet Nuh, Nuh Al Islam used to fast as well, yeah? So it's a very special day for Muslims, yeah? For, even for our Prophets. And Muhammad Sallallahu used to fast this day, even when he was in Makkah, yeah? But, it's, but the Hadith says that when he migrated to Medina, uh, he found that the Jews are fasting. Actually, let me read the Hadith. It says, in the report in both Bukhari and Muslim, from Ibn Abbas عنه, that when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached Medina, he found the Jews fasting the day of Ashura, and so he asked them, what is this day you're fasting? They said, this is a tremendous day. Allah <coughs> saved Musa and his people on this day and drowned Fir'aun and his people. Musa fasted it out of thanks and we fast it too. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, We and we are more deserving of Musa than you are. So he fasted this day in order that it be fasted. And afterwards, later on, this is initially, he heard about, he started, and before in Makkah he used to fast himself. When he reached Medina, he heard about the significance of this day, so he ordered the Muslims to fast it. And afterwards, later on, uh, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ordering the Muslims to fast this day, the day of Ashura, and ordering his companions to fast, his companion said, Ya Rasulullah, this is a day that the Jews and Christians venerate. I, they also fast, they, they also celebrate it. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He goes, when next year comes, if Allah wills, we will fast the ninth of it as well. I, to be different from the Jews and Christians, we're going to fast the ninth and the tenth. So that's why it's recommended not only to fast the, ninth on, uh, the tenth on its own, 
we should fast the ninth and the tenth, or the tenth and the eleventh, to be different from the Jews and the Christians. But as the hadith says, the next year did not come before the Messenger of Allah وسلم, passed away. But, as I said, this day is a very important day, yeah? historically as we can see. Yeah? And so therefore we definitely should fast it, fast the ninth and the tenth. And in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu he said, sorry, no, Rasulullah sallallahu Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he said, whoever fasts Ashura, it is as if he has fasted the entire year. And whoever gives charity this day, it's like the charity of an entire year. So it's recommended, it's not only fast this day, but to give charity on this day as well. So we should definitely take up the opportunity, yeah? Take up this opportunity, because it's a, it's a valuable... Uh, time for us to gain reward and if we're thinking about this as a new year a new Islamic year has begun a new opportunity for us then we should start taking op taking advantage of this opportunity straight away we shouldn't waste any time but going back to the story of Bani Israel and Musa al-Islam there's a, there's a lot more that we can learn and I think we should look into that so after the Red Sea uh, had drowned Fir'aun Bani Israel and Musa, Musa Islam was leading Bani Israel to the promised land, to Philistine. And where they were is Egypt. And as you know, Egypt is based in the Middle East. It's a very hot place. So they had to wander through here, following Musa Islam, to find this place, to find Philistine. But, as it was quite hot, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His infinite mercy, He made the skies cloudy, so they would not hurt Bani Israel. The sun would not hurt them as much. And Bani Israel, because they started getting uh, thirsty as well, obviously they ran out of water, they started getting thirsty, they asked Musa Islam, we need something to drink. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanded him to strike a particular rock. And when he struck this rock, yeah, amongst Bani Israel there was like 12 tribes, yeah, 12 uh, different like main families. And when he struck this rock, 12 springs came out of this rock, 12 different springs of water. So that Bani Israel could drink from it, could drink enough, and that there will be enough. Uh, they won't have to fight amongst each other for the water as well. <coughs> so Alhamdulillah, there's another blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, look how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala takes care of His believers. Yeah, takes care of the people that He's He's guiding. But then obviously they were hungry as well. They said we need food. Yeah, but it's hard to find food out here. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, so Musa Islam made the water Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to, to give us food. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced fruits from the uh, plants from the earth for them to eat. And they had lots and lots of food to eat. Yeah? Lots and lots of food to eat. Now imagine, yeah? Now imagine, this is, this is a great favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Bani Israel. Yeah? Now I want you to imagine something. Imagine like, you know, you've heard about recently the student fees, isn't it? Yeah? That they're going to go up in 2012 to approximately £9,000 a year. Yeah? Now to go to university, that means it's going to cost you three years, twenty-seven thousand yeah? pounds. Now imagine somebody said to you, "I'm going to give you twenty-seven thousand yeah? pounds to go to university. Not even a loan. I'm going to give it to you." Would you feel grateful to this person? You feel quite grateful, isn't it? Yeah. You be like, "Listen, man, you need to wash your car, wash your dog, wash you. I'll do it." Yeah? <laughs> you know I mean, I'm there, bro. Yeah? No questions asked, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there might be halal and haram issues, but we can come to that later, inshallah. Yeah. The fact is that you'd be willing to, you'd be so grateful to this guy, isn't it, yeah? You wouldn't be like, oh man, he phones you and he goes, listen, I need some help. You're like, oh, bro, man, I'm kind of busy, yeah? You know what I mean? Uh, I was going to watch EastEnders, man, yeah? You know what I mean? You, you're going to make extra, extra effort for this guy. You'd be very, very grateful. But look at the response of Bani Israel to this situation, yeah? After everything Allah SWT has done for them, he's, he's made the sun easy on them, yeah? Given them food, given them water, yeah? How do they respond? They respond by saying, we get the same food every day. Yeah, we want special. We want like the food we had in Egypt. We want the onions. You know, we want the lentils, the garlic. You know, we want that kind of quality food. The, the different food that we're having in Egypt. Yeah, and they asked Musa Islam to make supplication to Allah for this, and Musa got so angry. He goes, "You are so ungrateful." Yeah, you got food. You got water. What more do you want? Yeah, you want choice now. Yeah, you know, you want to go back to Egypt and be slaves again. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you. Liberty, uh, liberated you from slavery and now you want to go back to that you know and that's something that we should think about as well I mean are we grateful for what we have yeah are we really grateful for what the things that we have because the fact is we have a lot to be grateful for 
And you guys might be thinking, okay, what do I have to be grateful for? I ain't got a fancy 